Okay, excellent. Well, welcome. Good evening. Good to have you all with us here tonight. Welcome to Austin Bible Church. This is a very special evening for us because, uh, as you all are very well aware, we have uh, very special guests that are with us tonight. And looking forward to this report and this time of fellowship, this time of encouragement, this time of prayer. Uh, of course, um, Eager and Julia have been here before. The Smolyars were here in 2020, in fact, March of 2020. So it's just uh, three years ago now that I don't know where the time goes by. And uh, back then, we thought that the world was kind of crazy because of COVID. We thought that, uh, you know, COVID was the, the craziest thing we could possibly imagine. And then we, little did we know that um, something worse than COVID is war. You know, when your country gets invaded by the country next door. So um, anyway, you're going to hear a lot more about that tonight. And uh, we'll have opportunities for questions and answers and, and opportunities like that. Um, but you might remember when we had uh, Igor here before that uh, Igor is a graduate of the Word of God Bible College in uh, Kiev, Ukraine. That's Jim Meyer's ministry there. And he actually was a student before I ever went over there for my first time. So he graduated um, 2003 and then my first time over there was 2005 so uh, I didn't get to actually have him as a student but he was the one that they kept talking about as, as one of the, the best students the one that graduated and the one that is a pastor in Jitomir so I was really pleased to hear those stories and then and then to meet him in, in later years and then to bring him here just so many blessings and I'm just so thankful for it this time though it the blessings are multiplied because it's not only Igor and Julia that are here but their children are with us as well and so we'll be hearing more about them as well, but Daniel and Sophia and Matthew and got to meet them a little bit earlier and, and visit over dinner and just so many blessings as well. So, um, Eager, would you please come and, and, and bring us the report here tonight? There's just one little button to click on your microphone. Yeah. Or do you have that? Maybe I use this one. No? That one would be better. Okay. Yeah. So one little button. Hey, good evening. It's working, right? Oh, yeah. Um, it's so joy for me and my family to be here with you. It's uh, it's God's miracle for us to came to. I'm in Houston before and now in Austin. So, and I'm so thankful for all your prayers, and uh, we're just so glad to spend just a little bit time. Before we leave to Ukraine, we are going to leave to Ukraine this coming Sunday. So, so I just want to share some brief report what we are doing, what happening in Ukraine. And after my report, if you have any questions, any questions, I will try to answer. Okay. Uh, if somebody uh, ask me to describe previous year in one sentence, I would like to use some passages from Bible to describe last year. Psalm 24, if you have some Bible, just open with me. Psalm 124, 124, it's uh, verse one and two. Psalm 124, uh, First and second verses. Had it not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say. Had it not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us. So if, if I describe last year, this is my s sentence. Lord was on our side. Amen. That's all. Okay. Lord was on our side. Because uh, before, when the war started, a lot of uh, political persons, like of military persons, they just said, hey, Ukraine, and next three days, Ukraine will fall down, fall, will be fallen. So, Russian, Russia has huge army and a lot of people do not believe in Ukraine. But it's only because God. Of course, and some people, some army, some soldiers, but 
we are Ukrainian, we praise God, he was on our side. And we still, we still survive and still can fight and can live. So, uh, I'm Igor Smoller, and my wife Julie, my son Daniel, daughter Sophia, and youngest son Matthew, they, we all together here, and uh, so just a little bit report what, what, what we are doing in Ukraine. Uh, uh, when the war started, uh, Julie, Sophia, and Matthew, they moved, evacuated to Poland. Uh, me and Daniel, we stayed in Ukraine because uh, all men, they cannot leave country. It's forbidden right now because it's war. So, uh, but after six months, uh, my wife has met to come back to Ukraine. And Daniel, he got some permission to leave country to continue his education. And uh, because, because of God's faithfulness and God's miracle, he is in Houston right now. And he is trying to get some job and continue his education because uh, because war is no education in in Ukraine, only online. And I will tell you a little bit more about situation, and you will understand why is no education in Ukraine. So Daniel, he's living here in Houston, not here. I mean, in Texas. Uh, Sophia, she is living in Poland, in Krakow, and uh, Julie and Matthew and me, we just stay in, in Jutomir in Ukraine. Uh, before war, uh, our ministry was like, emphasis my ministry, I'm a pastor and I'm trying to teach and preach in our church. Before war we had about 350, 400 people in church, but now it's about 100, 120. A lot of people do not come back, will not, probably will never come back because you know, it's not easy time, it's very difficult, no jobs, no future, um, it's not easy. And before four, we had like big blessings in our ministry in Ukraine. So, but war started and our focuses a little bit changed and I will try explain something what what happened in Ukraine. So. Uh, when it was started, we just left only one services. Only one service, it's Sunday morning service. Uh, first two months we gather in, in shelter. In our church we have basement, shelter, place. So we gather in there. Uh, it's, a, it's for 70 people, b shelter. So. Uh, in the first months, our in our building in church, it was like a refugee center, because a lot of people evacuated from Kiev region, or like North region. Uh, Zhitomir about 90 miles from Belarus border, and as you know, Russian invasion was from Belarus border, so we didn't expect this. So we expect Russian invasion from east of Ukraine, where is border with Russian. But we do not expect that Russian, actually Belarus, let used territory for another country to invade, to, be, to come to Ukraine. So we just didn't expect this. But anyway, so uh, in, the few, in the first two months, our church was like refugee center because a lot of people moving to Europe, west part of Ukraine, and Zhitomir is like uh, on the highway to west part of Ukraine. So a lot of people uh, just came for night, sleep, and go in other places. But in April months, last April months, uh, last April, I, I have a very good friend. Here's some pictures I will show you. Uh, this is uh, my friend. He is not military. He hadn't military experience. He was just a uh, man who repaired the roof. But when war came, a lot of 
people, a lot of men said, and not only men, and women also said, hey, we want to fight for country. And he's Christian, and he, one of them, from many people who just decided to go to war and fighting. And uh, he invited me to, to go with him to east of Ukraine. Because in April, you know, uh, Russian invasion just moved to east. So they, they did realize that they did not capture Kiev and all this territory and front war front or battle zone, they just moved to east of Ukraine. It's Donetsk, Lugansk region and south of Ukraine. <coughs> so he invited me to visit east of Ukraine to support our soldiers. Because uh, about 80% of soldiers right now are just regular people. They didn't have any training, any special education, I mean military education. Just people like, <laughs> like probably most of us. So, and they need some supporting. I mean supporting like uh, prayers or just talking about, just sometimes just talking. And uh, this was my first trip to East or War Zone. Uh, here's some pictures. Um, this is place where we stay. In. So we go this place. This is gymnastic room in school. So when you when we came to this place, in a few minutes, it was huge explosion, and this is like results. So this is our, okay, here's some picture of my friend, so, uh, okay. Uh, in May, I met one guy. Uh, he is American officer who is serving in east of Europe. He's serving, I mean, he's military. He's an of officer, and he is serving in Poland, and he's Christian. He has, um, he has some uh, non-profit organization who is providing some military stuff for soldiers, for Ukrainian soldiers, for free. Like body armors, helmets, tel thermal imagers, uh, some scopes, and some of them, and drones. Drones, you understand drones? Uh, this war call it War of Drones. If you have some free time, you can go to YouTube. It's not advertising, okay? It's just, uh, you can go to YouTube and drones and war in Ukraine. Just type in and you will see why it's called war of drones. So this guy, he, I met him and he told me, hey, you, if you want, I can help some people you know, like me. I know some soldiers. Even some people in our church, they went to war, so they need some help. It, I was surprised when I came to war zone to found that a lot of soldiers, trust me, a lot of, in the beginning of war, they didn't have body armors and they fighting. I know I met some soldiers who, three soldiers, have only one helmet for three persons. So if they go to fighting, they just change. You understand? It was like how it can be. So, but guys, but by God's grace, it's like God provide a lot of stuff for the soldiers. And I was like, my ministry was like going to Poland to take some stuff and go to east of Ukraine and just uh, to deliver the stuff, but not only to de de deliver, but it's also a very good opportunity to talk about God. You cannot come to soldiers and say, hey, sit down, please, listen to me, I will preach you. This doesn't work. Actually, it's working, but it's, you know, and so, but when you bring some stuff, and you say, hey, we're praying for you, maybe you want to pray right now for you. Very open, a lot of soldiers open. They open for praying, for hearing about God, because war is 
good place to, to, listen, to listen about God and pray. So here's some picture of what we provide. I will be, it's online, right? So I just quickly, because I don't, so here's like, uh, unfortunately, these guys, they died. Yeah, it's, okay, another picture is uh, before our trip to uh, Houston and Austin. Actually, in Ukraine, it's cold. It's like weather like this. It's about 10, maybe 5 temperature. So, and uh, we brought some sto stove, right? Stove. Because uh, they built some places underground for hidden from bombs, so, and they need some stoves to, to have some heating. So we provide even some such stuff. So this is like uh, also a good opportunity to talk about God. Because this is so, uh, okay, here's some pictures. Uh, this book called uh, God's Promises. Uh, Robert Dean, he's from West Houston Church, he wrote some books about God's promises like for special period of your life. For example, if you have some warnings or fear or you or trust in the Lord, so just different passages from Bible for special period for your life. This is a small book because sometimes uh, uh, non-believers non or now, Christian, they do not read Bible like just open Bible. They want to sometimes using just so easy. You understand what? And this is good opportunity to give him this book. And hey, if you have some fear, here's God's promises. If you alone, here's a lot of promises. And for that, it's also good because uh, I'm always leave my contact cell phone number, and they all sometimes can chat with me, texting with me, and sometimes we just share some messages, some Bible verses. It's good. So we, we printed about 50,000 copies, and we just distribute not only soldiers, but most, most all these copies to soldiers, but also refugees. You know, a lot of refugees in Ukraine right now. Okay, some pictures. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, this is my b bus. Reason why I put this photo because uh, it, some of churches, including Austin Bible Church, helped me to get this bus because before war, uh, cars prices just grew up, and it was expensive, but. God, God's grace provided this bus. So I'm using this bus to go to Poland. It takes a lot of stuff because it's a huge bus. And to deliver to east of Ukraine or south of Ukraine. Okay, some pictures. We still have some services in Zhitomir. It's a picture of our church. It's like summertime. So... Uh, we still do not restore all services. We just uh, trying to do this, but it's not easy because a lot of people left, and we just uh, trying to have some Sunday morning service, some prayer meetings, and trying to do some home groups, but it's still not like previous life. But it. But praise to God for everything. So we have some services to do. Okay. Um, another ministry. So now my focus uh, consists from different areas like sharing gospel to soldiers, preaching and teaching in my church, continuing to do this. And another ministry is we are ministering to families who lost father and husbands, like this one. This is a meeting for families who lost husbands, 
I mean fallen soldiers. Uh, and this is like Christmas service, special service for such families. And we provide some food, some toys for children, some, you know, some different stuff if they need something. And we just gather them all together and just support them, just encourage them. Uh, in Ukraine, officially forbidden to say numbers, how many soldiers died. But I guess it's more than 100,000, even more. We know Russian soldiers died a lot, but in Ukraine, if you just go to every, how you call this place where funeral, where body put in ground, cemetery? Cemetery, if you go to cemetery, I mean, in every large cities, central cemetery, you will see a lot of, lot of flags. This is soldiers. It was soldiers. So anyway, we continue to serve this kind of, oh, this is Christmas program for children. You will see some, some gifts, some candies, some toys, some presents. Okay, this is another ministry. We just started this ministry. Uh, and um, it's interesting. I just explain and then show a video. So uh, I have one, my fellow pastor. He was in Germany and he brought some uh, stove for pizza. It's like mobile stove on gas. And what we are doing, we are going to different military unit. Not fr front line, just maybe a couple miles from war zone, where they base, base it. And cooking, cook it, cooking pizza and sharing gospel. Sing some songs, just talking about soldiers. And this is a short video how it's happening. Excuse me. Uh, this guy in red shirt, his son died. He, he was member of our church, his son. He, is, he was 21 years old. And he died uh, like in war. He was soldier, and his father continued to serve soldiers. So this is this is like short video. So we're trying to develop this ministry, and probably when I be back, we will do a lot of different stuff. Uh, so this is like short report what we are doing right now in Ukraine and I'm so so thankful for your prayers for your support and it means a lot and um, you know when it was started uh, especially my when my family evacuated I I just prayed God God use me because I just want to be useful for you. And when war, it's, it's you don't understand what happened in the future. It's very difficult because you had special style of life, special schedule, special s everything what you doing, you understand what I'm talking. And just everything just shut down. And, and you just pray and Pray and I just prayed and got open. A lot of opportunities. It's still dangerous. Every day, almost every day, we are having uh, sirens. You know, sirens, it's sound where rockets coming. So Russian right now trying to destroy all infrastructure of Ukraine, especially power plants, because it's cold. No electricity. 
no heating, no water, nothing. And a lot of people, Bob saw, live not in private houses, like apartment houses. So if such huge building, they do not have heating in freeze period, couple days, so it's like, I mean, heating, si heating system just destroy it, and no living in this such building. So that's why Russia attacking every day. By the way, last Thursday was massive, again, massive rockets attack and Jetomer. Zhytomyr and Lviv, uh, Lviv region, it's west of Ukraine, just destroyed. I heard and I just got messages, couple days, no electricity, no water, but it's still cold, so oh, this, this is our reality. But it's still, we, we still learning how to serve God, how to be thankful God, for all your situation, what you have. So, thank you, and we just praise the Lord for everything. Maybe you have some questions. We have some questions, Hans? Yes, okay. please. All right. Has, have y'all been experiencing gas shortages? Say, Ga uh, gasoline shortages? I, I, I'm a gas station. Do we have? Uh, for right now, it's not a problem. In the beginning of war, first, I guess, four months, it's, it was a problem. No gas, because mm, no, like, training, because the Russia trying to destroy even, like, uh, gas station, so. Uh, but it's, uh, in Ukraine, gas is very expensive. So when I came to Texas, Praise, praise God for Texas. I don't know about uh, different states, <laughs> but in Texas you have good price for gas, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> it's in double time, I, double. So we have like uh, one dollar and a half for one liter. I don't know how it's transferred to gas. Yeah, then liter per gallon and yeah. then, yeah. So gallon, it's four liters, I guess. Three, four liters, so maybe more. Yeah. Other so questions? Are the stoves burn wood or do they burn gas? Uh, they burn? Like in our facility, church facility, we have we have woods, woods, wood, 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 but uh, some of them we have gas. Okay. Yeah, for pizza it's like mobile. You can just took this, took this, and just go and cook pizza. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, other questions? Uh, yeah, please. Thank you. Uh, what are your immediate needs for the next month or two? <laughs> Good question. Uh, when war came, uh, our regular life changed. So before war, we thought that this is w was like our needs. Now we just think it's not our needs. <laughs> so we can live with old stuff. But uh, difficult question because for right now, uh, I can say some needs. But in a few weeks, it's already no needs or another needs. So if you're talking about uh, like spiritual needs or material needs, what, or just same. Okay, uh, like main our needs, it's protection, our family, and especially for my family who is staying with me in Jutomir, uh, because uh, everyday explosions, and um, Zhytomyr, it's military city. About five or six different military units based in this city. So 
but if we're talking about spiritual, it's like we, we have we, we provided, but by God, but by God's grace, is everything what we need. But if you're talking about spiritual need, it's uh, I'm talking about like personal needs because I'm tired because a um, lot of driving, a lot of uh, very tired, and sometimes uh, uh, my physical condition do not allow me to do a lot of mi f spiritual things. And uh, so this is like our needs. And of course, we still some needs about our children who is living without us. So, so when you go back to Jitomir, yes, it'll be you and Julia and Matthew. Matthew. Yes. Right, because Daniel's in Daniel, he is, try he is in Houston. He is trying, oh, okay, I forgot about education. Thank you. Uh, he's trying to get some education here, I mean in Houston, and he's looking about job, uh, and uh, Sofia, she, she staying in Poland, also trying to get some classes there. But Matthew, he is attending school in Jutomir. Uh Not all schools are open in, uh, in Ukraine. Only those who have basement or shelters, just a few. Even in Zhitomir, just, just a few. Most of uh, schools like online. Mm -hmm. But online, it's no education. It's not education online. Uh, and uh, another problem, when it sirens, they go to basement and still no education. Like today, today or yesterday, it's four times sirens in Ukraine. It means whole day children stay at basement. So <laughs> I cannot call this education. Mm -mm. You understand? So. Is it easy to, well not easy, but is it relatively easy to transfer, to, to move, to go to another country, to, to leave and go to Poland, to leave, to go, for, not for men, but for the rest of the families to leave if they want to? Um, it's, <laughs> sometimes it's easy, but it's not easy <laughs> in the same way. Uh, I have some permission to leave country because I'm working with army and like government gave me permission to leave country because I provide some military, not I provide, but I bring some stuff for soldiers. So that's why I have permission to leave country. Uh, it, it's not easy to leave country because Europe, I mean Poland and other country, now because of war it's like expensive to live in that places. So. If you're asking about our family, we had experience six months, like no family. I mean, like, no, I understand. Live separately. This is not good. And we just decided for my wife to back. By the way, huge problem in Ukraine right now, especially in families, military families, is divorces. Uh, can you imagine one year war and a lot of wives and children, they live in Europe. Their husbands fighting. No communication. Some of them, some of the wife already divorced to have some new families. And can you imagine emotional condition of this soldier? It's it sounds like you're functioning as a chaplain, but do they have chaplains in their military? Good question. Yes, uh, for right now, yes. Uh, I guess in September, officially, 
we had in our army chaplain's ministry. Before we didn't have an army chaplain's ministry. Only like if you want to be chaplain, you just do it by like volunteer. It's not officially. Right now it's trying to officially. And uh, I knew some good chaplains from uh, America and we, me and some other guys, we organized some meetings for um, Ukrainian side and American side to coordinate plans for chaplain's ministry. So because of war, I met a lot of high rank officers, like in the Ukraine part and American part. So we just organized some meeting. And in September, officially, officially, we have chaplain's ministry. But um, unfortunately, not a lot of chaplains like Protestant. Mm -hmm. Lot of Orthodox in Ukraine. Main religion is Orthodox, like it's it's kind of Catholic, but it's not Catholic. Mm. It's Orthodox. It's different. So most chaplains they are Orthodox. It's it's still good, but we still need good uh, Protestant, good chaplains with good doctrines, with with good mind. You understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. So how much contact do you have with your fellow students from Word of God Bible College, your fellow pastors in different parts of Ukraine? Are you staying in touch with each other? Just uh, I touch with uh, Alek. Okay. A uh, couple times I talked with Vasya in Lviv. In Lviv, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's all. Okay. I, I, I know some of them, they left country, mm -hmm. but I don't know. Well, I know Jim Myers is trying to keep in touch with everybody that he can. Um, and it's hard to win. I don't know. Yeah. Probably just a few. Okay. Probably just a few. Okay. Because, um, uh, you know, war, it's like, it's also a challenge mm -hmm. for people. And um, some people just decided to to be quiet. Mm -hmm. No ministry, just be quiet. You know, just regular person yeah. who is just waiting f when war will end. If you guys think about it, keep uh, Jim and Phyllis in prayer. They're traveling today, and they will be back in Kiev by this Sunday. So it's their first time back. You're not experiencing any uh, persecution as a Christian there, are you? In Ukraine? Uh-huh. Uh, in Ukraine, no. But uh, territory which occupied right now, Russians, huge persecution for Christian. Mm. Uh, one officer, I mean Ukrainian soldier, showed me when, when they catch it, some Russian soldiers, and found some documents. In those documents, it was list of facilities uh, when the Russian came, list of facilities to catch first, like government buildings, like uh, military buildings, like police buildings, and Baptist churches. Reason why? Because a lot of Baptist church in Ukraine, they have some connection with America. Mm -hmm. And uh, Orthodox church, propaganda of Orthodox church, just uh, said, this is spion, sp spion. You understand? Spion, spion, spion. Spy. Spy. Um, Okay, so it was it was interesting, and a lot of uh, like Baptist churches, I mean facilities, they destroyed because they just Baptist. I mean, in trust me, Russian propaganda. It's in Ukraine. It's uh, have you ever seen Lord of Rings? Mm -hmm. Yes. And we call Russian soldiers orcs. 
but one of the movie actor he say do not call these people orcs because orcs much better than russians oh, no. wow well, well, oh Hello. So s I have a couple of questions, if you don't mind. So along the or um, this question about crackdown on churches, um, I read that there's some crackdown by the Kiev government on the Orthodox churches. Um, so have you seen any crackdown on any other types of Christian churches in your region? Uh, I'm sorry. I oh, it's I? some sound. I no, my voice might be. Uh, have you seen any, there seems to be, there may be uh, some crackdown by the Kiev government on the Orthodox churches in the Ukrainian uh, controlled areas. Have you seen any crackdown of any other sorts of uh, Christian churches in your region? Or maybe that's not true. Maybe it's not true. Yes, please. Oh, that's it. Православну церкву uh -huh. почала гоніти. Питання, чи є ще інші церкви, які гоне uh, українські, ну, типу, київські, типу, аріжі? Uh, no persecution for Orthodox Church in Ukraine. No. Okay. It's a kind of propaganda. I see. Uh, okay. I explain a little bit. Uh, Orthodox Church has different divisions and different heads of these divisions like Russian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, Egypt Orthodox, Copt Coptic Church. So, and uh, Turkey, Constantinople uh, division. So, this different division. In Ukraine, we are having two divisions, Russian Orthodox Church and Ukrainian Orthodox Church. Right. So, Russian Orthodox Church, it's like office of KGB. And uh, this is pro-Russian churches. And they like Russians, they're waiting for Russians. So in Ukraine, a lot of police came to Orthodox temples and found pro-Russian literature, some food, some diesel. So they prepared, they wait, they are waiting for Russian soldiers. So they knew that war is coming. That's part of Ukrainian government, part of Ukrainian policy, to say, hey, just transfer from Russian Orthodox Church to Ukrainian Orthodox Church. You understand? This is no persecution. If some priest support Russian, it doesn't matter. You are a bad guy, and you are going to jail. It's not even civil people. If they support Russian, waiting for Russian and help Russian, they are going to jail, to prison. It's no religion persecution. It's because you are a bad person. If you support Russian, go to Russian. No problem. I answer Does the Ukrainian Orthodox Church or even the Christian churches they minister to, are they able to minister to Russian speaking Ukrainians? Uh. Just wonder I mean if it's an uncomfortable question, never mind. <laughs> Я зрозумів, бачу, воно трошки мені тут звучить. Окей, thank you. Um, language is not problem in Ukraine. It's uh, part of Russia propaganda. They came, I mean, Russia soldiers, they came to Ukraine to save Russian-speaking people. This is propaganda. Language is not problem in Ukraine. Yes, we have some people who is speaking in Russian, especially east of Ukraine, like south of Ukraine, but a uh, lot of people, they 
the pro-Ukrainian position. Yes, some of them is pro-Russian position, but it's not problem language. Like um, my wife, she was born in Russia. She's Ukrainian, but uh, she still speaks Russian language. It's not problem. Not problem in our family, not problem in society. So a lot of uh, churches, they serve in Russian-speaking people. In my church, I preach sometimes Russian language, sometimes Ukrainian language. It's not a problem. Zhytomyr, it's mostly western city, west part of city. And in Zhytomyr, uh, people do not speak Ukrainian or Russian. It's mixed, mm. mixed two languages. Mm. We call this surzhik. Yes, we call this surzhik when you mix different words from different languages. So this is not a problem. We have that here in Texas, too, with a lot of English-Spanish combinations of Spanglish. That Yes. So, uh, Sp Spanish people do not invite Mexico to come and free Texas, right? Right. <laughs> okay. Yes, please. A Texan who loves the Ukrainian people provided satellite technology for y'all. Is it still being used by the people? What kind of technology? Well, at the beginning of the war, uh, Starlink? Yes. Are you talking about Starlink? Starlink, yes. What is question, please? Okay. It's it's question or, or statement? Is it working well? Is it not working well? Uh, good question. Is that is that uh, if you if you pay uh, money, it's still working. <laughs> okay. Bef in, in the beginning of war, in the beginning of war, Elon Musk, uh -huh. he just allowed for free. But now he said it's business. <laughs> ah. So, so we have a lot of Starlinks soldiers using Starlinks every day. Mm -hmm. I brought a lot of Starlinks, but you need to pay every month, uh, like special price for using wow. this internet. Is Elon, is he in Austin tonight? Do you know? Can we, can we go meet him? Yeah. We'll take Igor over there and say, <laughs> Igor, this is... <laughs> yes. You know. Okay, yes, any other questions? Yeah. We have... Carol has more questions. Come on, yeah. Catch up. So is there an organized, centralized um, war plan? by the government, by the Ukrainian government? Or is it more um, separate groups fighting in the areas they need to fight in? Does that make sense? Can you say in a different way okay. what does mean organize? Centralized, is there one main? Yes. Uh, yes, we have um, like main people who is controlling and planning and fighting, yes. And then they send out people everywhere to Yes. Okay, got it, thanks. Oh, I didn't, we yes. didn't know. Okay, yes, <laughs> yes. In the beginning, uh, uh, like, it was house. Right. In the beginning, but uh, right now it's, it's even, like, part of my ministry, I do not bring a lot right now because, uh, like, Supporting army and staff army is it's it's good right now. So yes, please. Okay, thank you for so much for coming uh, and informing us of so many things we need to know. I need to know, or I want to know. Do you have enough Ukrainian Bibles? Mm -hmm. Yes. So they're available to anyone who wants one. In the Ukraine? Yes. And okay. I'm, I'm going to, when I be back, um, uh, one of them, like, great ministry, what we're doing also, it's a digital Bible. Okay. Digital Bible, listening Bible, like soldiers, they memory stick, and 
headphones and they just listening. And uh, I already distribute about 20,000 and more coming. A lot of people just in America just provided some for free. But now people changing from Russian Bible, reading Russian Bible to Ukraine. So yes. before war, we had a lot of people who's re who use, who using Russian translation. Now more people trying to use Ukrainian translation, but it's no problem with Bibles, no problems. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. For the younger children, um, is homeschooling an option? And are those materials, like Christian homeschooling materials, available? Um, we, do not, uh, we do not have homeschool like here. It's a different style of education, different system. You have here is homeschool education. We do not have homeschool. Okay. Children stay at homes, but they are watching online lessons. So teacher sitting in classroom or at home and just teaching via Zoom or other program. So it's, we don't have like you have here homeschool education, no. Um, Outside of the war, um, I know it's hard to think outside of the war, but before the war and just in normal times, what are some of the typical um, obstacles you may need to overcome when you're ministering the gospel to Ukrainians? No, I understand. I just can't understand what the question of the Mm, before war, right? Um, typical, okay, it's, it's kind of like here situation when people, um, they have good salary, good uh, place where they live, they don't need God, right? They don't want, actually don't want, they just, hey, we just fine. Let's listen to you next time. So when everything is good, we don't need God, usually. It's like reaction, so. But it's even in wartime, when soldiers on front line, they are very open. When just go to safe place for like for a couple of weeks for vacation, I mean, not vacation, but you understand, for staying at homes, so they forgot about God. This is like normal for our human nature, so. This is not good, but it's sinful nature. So when you have some trouble, you just open to God. When you have everything okay, it's... Um, <laughs> typical. Uh, on a Sunday morning at your church, uh, uh, how does that go? You sing some songs, you preach a message. I'm just wondering, and different now than before the war, if the... Message is we different. have a YouTube channel. We can <laughs> show you <laughs> service <laughs> next time. Uh, uh, so uh, it's not typical like you you have here, uh, but it's uh, usually we have two hour service, and uh, we have choir, Sunday school. Uh, usually it's two sermons, usually, and usually it's sometimes it's. Uh, like different people who is preaching. I mean, it's kind of this. So you can watch on YouTube, but okay. you you can put even this is can uh, get uh, you. I understand. YouTube. Okay, you can okay. watch yeah, and yeah. see. Okay, thank you. But uh, we're trying to keep. Um, Sound good, sound doctrine, good doctrine, mm -hmm. free grace gospel, and to provide good, deeply teaching. Mm -hmm. It's not always, but we just try to do this. 
Um, I hate to ask this question. As an American, I know that we sound very naive um, in a lot of things that we are asking you. Um, but this is a very naive question. What do you see in America as you've been visiting us that we need to be aware of that you're seeing as you've been going through what you've been going through? Uh, in the future direction, I... Yeah, um, well, I'm obviously the spiritual side, but what other things do you think we need to be paying attention to? <laughs> I don't know because I'm not living here. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't know, like, like in Texas you have special condition, in California different, uh, um, uh, I don't, I, it's hard to ask. But we, but we, we, we can we, we can read Bible and we see a lot of warnings in the Bible. So I think it's uh, typical and same for ages. So just if God's word just warns something, we just need to hear this. So if God's word just encourage or command some pray, read Bible, live holy life, uh, do some ministry. It's what we need to do. It's the same for Ukraine, for America, I guess, and for other countries. I just had a question about, um, you mentioned choir. Do you guys prefer the old hymn, hymnals, or do you guys sing the new songs? <laughs> uh, before war, we had three, qu three choirs. Uh, uh, like, uh, usually we call it general, where it's ladies and gen men's, uh, only men's and uh, youth choir. So if we're talking about youth choir, it's like some of the modern hymns. Like not modern, but um, not old fashion style. <laughs> so, but we're trying to provide, uh, okay, we're not emphasize for old or new. We emphasize about content. So what is what does mean? So if sa if in this uh, song, fifty times Hallelujah, so it's okay. We like this, but trying to provide some deep, some theology, good. So I'm not I'm not against Hallelujah. So <laughs> I just for example, you know, but we trying to think. Uh, not all style mm -hmm. hymns only. Mm -hmm. So, because it's interesting, in uh, we have very similar hymns, just like you singing and we, but uh, some of all style, like Ukrainian or Russian hymns, they had some bad theology sometimes. Yeah. So that we're trying to be careful. And mo modern especially. Modern style of music, it needs to be, be ever. Um, I have a question. Uh, because of war, is starvation a very serious problem there? Starvation. Starvation? Hold on, hold on. For right now, no. But in the war zone, in the war zone, or where is... Uh, bombing every day or explosion is some kind of problem but uh, um, okay I'm trying to explain a uh, lot of organization uh, right now do not bring some food for in to war zone for people who stay in, in war zone reason why is for Russian people mm. Pro-Ukrainian people almost, all of just evacuated. So, and all these people, they waiting for Russian army. Mm -hmm. So, but it's still some organization who is provided some food. Because if you ask people why they do not evacuate it from war zone, usually it's, they just silence, but we know why. Yeah. So. 
it's, it's true, in Ukraine we have pro-Russian people. Right. It's true. It's our history. And of course it's part of propaganda. So, this is our reality. But, anyway. Yeah. Well, thank you, Igor. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to close with a prayer, and I'm just so thankful that uh, God has blessed us to, for you to come and join us tonight. Heavenly Father, we come before you just so thankful. You are a God of all grace, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort. And Father, we thank you for uh, Igor and Julia and their children, and we ask that you would bless them in their travels, and, and Father, provide for them, protect them. I thank you for these last three weeks so that they could be together as a family, and as they, uh, as they go to different places now, continue to sustain them and bless them. Thank you for um, the internet and cell phones and, and uh, WhatsApp and just different ways that we can talk even when we're in different parts of the world. And uh, thank you for, most of all, for your son who lives in us and, and dwells in us and the blessings that we have in Christ. So, Father, uh, this night is yours. We thank you for it. We praise you. And we ask again for your blessings on the small year family. We thank you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. Austin Bible Church is a grace ministry. No price is ever assigned to any video, audio, printed material, or anything provided by this ministry. Costs associated with such grace provision are paid in full by grace-oriented, born-again believers in Jesus Christ. Motivated by God the Holy Spirit, well-pleasing to God the Father. More information on our grace-giving policy and your opportunity to join in this Grace Financial Fellowship can be found at the link in the description below.